So 2020 has been a very difficult year. COVID hit and the International Baccalaureate had to cancel its exams. How then were the students going to be given the grades for the two years of study? Well, the plan was to use teacher-predicted grades and coursework to be able to um, assign a grade to the students. Um, of course, in order to make sure that there was a greater degree of accuracy, um, the IB used a statistical method to determine what was the relationship between a particular school's um, teacher predictions the coursework attainment and the actual grades that students got. It was using a statistical estimate and in doing so it preserved the world average or went slightly up. The trouble was is that not every individual in an institution performs exactly according to a statistical change and so some students got a very big upset and were disappointed by dropping several grades across the six subjects that they took. Schools, being unhappy about this, wanted to know what was the formula that the IB had used to determine this final grade. Um, they haven't disclosed it. Having said that, a, some teachers in Hong Kong have been working together and tried to reverse um, uh, form this formula and calculate what was the formula that they were using. A chap called John Chu in Hong Kong has um, seemingly cracked the algorithm and this is what he claims the algorithm is. In order to determine the scale total, which is the overall mark out of 100 that a student got at a particular course, it is a, um, a formula that's relatively simple. It's a constant A multiplied by the percentage of the predicted grade. So any predicted grade divided by seven will give you that percentage. Um, plus a constant B multiplied by a uh, percentage of performance in the AA. So it's the which is uh, the coursework, which is a moderated mark divided by the maximum mark in the, in the coursework, plus a final constant. Now, constants A and B are fixed for every particular subject in a certain time zone. Constant C is this unique to the school constant, which is uh, determined by um, how well they have done in the past both with predicting their grades, but also in terms of student performance. I'm not going to go into this video of how they have um, developed C because that's still being explored. Um, John and his, his, uh, his uh, friends are trying to uh, figure out exactly how C was determined, but it is constant for your school. So let's take a look and see if we can work out using school data, the constants. A, B, and C. To do this, you need to use um, the subject results and the subject component results that have been sent to you. So here's the subject results. We're going to be working with chemistry higher level. Um, you'll see that they are ranked in a predicted grade order. However, that means that the students are in a quite a random order. So these are the student codes and their names, but I blanked out um, the, the names to preserve their anonymity. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to take that data and we're going to put that into an Excel sheet that I've pre-prepared. So here's the Excel sheet. We I've already put the students in order um, and um, on their on two different sheets. So let's let's start to populate this information. So we'll go back to the subject results. So the subject results, the information we want from there is the predicted grade. So I'm going to highlight the predicted grade. I'm going to right click on it when I see that document icon. I'm going to copy that and I'm going to put that into my predicted grade column. So I've already organized my students in the order that it is in that sheet. Um, let's now paste the predicted grades next to them. Don't worry what's happening on the right, I'll explain that in a moment. 
I also need the scaled total from that sheet. So we're going to go back to the subject results. I'm going to select the scaled total. I'm going to copy that and paste that alongside the predicted grade. Good. We also need to have the um, coursework scaled mark. That's what we get from a different sheet. You should go into your subject component results. Again, I've organized already the data in the correct order, but I want now the moderated mark. So I'm going to select the moderated mark. I'm going to copy that and place that next to the students. So I had previously um, uh, pasted the students in and then just reduced it down to the candidate number just to as I say, preserve those students' identities. Now, at the moment, these, these values are not uh, lining up, so we better make sure that we get our students in the same order. So let's, we're gonna sort this information. So I'm gonna go into data. I'm going to sort it by student. So I put them in order of their um, uh, of their candidate number and I'm going to sort this one so that the students are also in candidate number and that means that all the information lines up the, the scale bar, the predicted grade and the overall total. So now let's go to the elements of the equation. So first of all, we need the percentage predicted grade. That's done by taking the predicted grade and dividing by seven. That's the maximum. So it gives you the percentage predicted grade and we want the percentage IA grade. So I've taken the IA mark, it's the scaled, um, uh, the, uh, the moderated mark and divide it by the total. And that gives us a mark, uh, uh, gives us a percentage of the IA. Now what I need is I need to m m use my model that, or use the model that John has suggested. So I have created a bunch of coefficients here. And um, this is P1, P2, and P3. And I've created a formula that says, let's take P1, the dollar signs means that I'm fixing it so that when I copy it down uh, the sheet that it will stay put. So, um, and I want that coefficient A times predicted grade coefficient plus coefficient B times coursework plus C. And you can see that I don't get the right answer. This if I use the coefficients a, b, and c, I get an answer of basically 11. And I'm aiming for a scale total of 54. So I'm out. How much am I out by? Well, let's do a quick calculation. I'm out by the difference between those two. I'm out by 43. And this is a bit of maths, but we have to square the difference. That's done by multiplying by itself. Okay, copy that all the way down. And we also need the most important, one of the most important parts of this, of this calculation is the sum of the squares and the differences. You can see this is a massive number, 64,644. We're way out. So what we want to do is we want to get, find out what coefficients would get that to zero. Because if we get that to zero, then these scale totals and the model will match. We need to do this, we need to use something called solver. That's already loaded in here, and you probably haven't got it loaded under, is under the data um, tab. You need to go then to File. You go to Options. You go into the Add-ins, and you are going to select an Excel add-in. You can go there, and you're going to tick the Solver add-in box. Just click OK, and it will be added to your Excel system. 
So let's show how it works. With this solver, what you have to do, you click on it, and it says, I'm going to set an objective. Now, I was already hovering over this um, uh, cell. Well, if you have, weren't hovering over the cell, you can go and click on that button. You can select that cell, go back. And I'm going to say that what I want to do is get that to as zero, as close to zero as possible, or my minimum. I'm going to set it to a minimum. And I want to do it by changing these variables. So if I do it by click and I'm selecting these variables and I now solve it. I, Solver tells me that I found a solution. I found a solution. Click OK. And these are the coefficients of my equation. I have found the formula that generated the scale total. Let's see. 54 to 54. 78 to, well, rounded to the nearest whole number. It's the same number. Now I want to show you that. Here's my model answer. I'm going to create a little formula that is going to round I want it to round the number I want it to round to is that one I don't want any um, decimal places look now this all matches it's an absolute perfect match so by using the solver add-on we can determine what the coefficients are and working with um with john chu we can share those uh, coefficients and he will confirm that those countries uh, those uh, schools that are in time zone one share the same coefficients a and b and the more of the merrier that share we can perhaps figure out what is coefficient c and how that was determined um, so if you're curious as to how what is the formula for your uh, uh, what is the what are the coefficients for your particular formula then use this method. A reminder, it's this. The interesting thing to this formula is that A and B are determining what weighting the predicted grade in the coursework has, and it's different for different subjects. B is almost invariably not 20%. It's some something different to that. Let's look back at what ours worked out as. Ours was in chemistry, it was more like 30%. So how these various coefficients were determined is unclear. There has only There is only speculation as to how possibly these are formed. They're different, as I say, for different subjects. They'll be different whether they are chemistry high level or chemistry standard level. Um, partly because they also work into different grade boundaries. Partly, it seems, that's what was altered in order to preserve the world average. Who determined these coefficients? Did a human determine them? Or possibly, was it even another computer program that was playing with these coefficients until it stuck to the world average. Only speculation, but hopefully this is one part of the puzzle that you can use if you're considering whether or not to, to advise a student towards an inquiry upon results. Hope you found this helpful. Have a good day.